It has been my experience, and you know, it's hard to find people who have experience in things. I'm not interested in selling you anything. I'm not, you know, I don't do it. I'm just trying to just, you know, give you information because I have spent a lot of money. <laughs> I have spent a lot of time, a lot of research on trying to find what would make life simple. The important key that I want you to leave with is choose one size. That's it. Do not plan on painting 9x12s, 12x16s, 14x18s, 24x26. You will spend most of your time jockeying around, having way too many supplies, way too many things. If you are comfortable painting small and your whole idea is to fill up a gallery of pieces that just kind of show where you've been and you want to share people and you want to be able to paint anywhere, and you're going to paint a thumb box here, then what you do is that you settle and you say six by eight or 12 by six, no, that's too big. This is a five by seven and yours is a six by eight. Six by eight. Six by eight. Yeah. Then you go, that's gonna be my life. My life's work is gonna be painting these small things if I go out and doors and paint. Some people, that's all they wanna do. Because not only, does, not only does it mean that you have to have extra boxes and different supplies, is that now you have this wet painting and you have with you this big huge box because this is where you put your wet panels in because you didn't think you needed a wet panel box for this one. Or if you bring three canvas sizes, you've got three different boxes that you have to put um, stuff in. So my recommendation is if you're going to be a painter outdoors, settle on a size, nine by 12, 12 by 16. That's pretty much what I would recommend. Now, pretty much choose the middle of the road box, choose the middle of the road canvas, choose the middle of the road. Don't look for small, don't look for big. Decide on one thing. When you go on a trip, only bring the same size of canvases. Don't think, oh, I'm gonna bring some nine by 12s and then I might come across something that requires a 12 by 36, so I need to bring some of those. Those things become, especially when they got paintings on them, they are so cumbersome. You will hate painting outdoors because you'll get paint on you, your car, your animals, your wife, you know. So you wanna make sure that you settle down on the size and stick with it, okay? Yes? Your panel, what is it? This? Okay, we'll got a few more minutes to kill here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> material. <clears throat> okay. What panels what panels do I use? That's important, yes. So when you are going to the art store. It's something I said? No, I'll be right <laughs> <laughs> When you go into the art store and you're picking up stuff for a plein air event, um, oftentimes you are pretty much railroaded into really low-end canvases that were mainly produced for students in high school that need to buy them. And you go to Michael's and they'll have this special where you can buy eight panels for a dollar. And they're usually cardboard and they have um, a really bad canvas on them. And so uh, they're canvas boards and they've really gotten a bad rap. Um, canvas uh, boards or canvases or boards uh, uh, as a whole pretty much got started at the beginning of time. And all of the, like the Mona Lisa is actually painted on a wood board itself. Um, what happened during the World War II when all the GIs were going off, um, a lot of women would need a hobby. So they would go down to the art store and they needed things that were relatively cheap and not expensive to be made. And so there were companies like Fredericks that would make cardboard backings with cheap canvas on them so that you, know, you can do them. Um, the issue with that is that they're not archival um, and the surface of them is very porous and they have a way of just sucking in the paint. They're not a really great surface. Consequently, canvas boards have gotten a really bad rap. 
because they're considered to be the low end. When in essence, they can be really super high end. Um, what has happened over the years is that there are companies that have produced canvas boards um, that are actually of such high quality. This is a canvas board and I brought this in. Um, I have a painting on this side that I did of hiking out of the Trinity Alps. Um, and it's actually done, uh, the, the, it's on an oil primed linen canvas and it's done by a company uh, called Wind River Arts. We'll have their information on our website. Um, and this, they have the L600, I don't know what that is, but all I know is that when I opened up the box and I saw this, I was in love because I was like, oh, yes. Normally I opened up the box and I got this. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is mahogany, and it has an oil prime canvas on it. This is what I was painting on for years and years and years. Um, the surface of the canvas is crucial. Again, it's oil prime canvas that's been attached to masonite boards and there's several companies that produce them. None of them rival this. This is like a Cadillac. And you know, for me, it's kind of like, first thing, when you have you, the, this back end exposed to the elements, you're, uh, it's very easy for water and moisture to cause warpage, because this is just thin plywood boards. Um, so you want to look for a panel that's actually yeah. sealed. So it makes sense. And when I talked to her before she sent them to me, they actually seal all the way around so there's no moisture that can get inside of here. They use the finest glues, the finest canvas that you can imagine. They're not cheap. But if you're selling your work at a gallery, your clients are going to look at it. They should be looking at it like they do a car or anything else. And when they flip the back side, and you see that you've chosen really high-end panels as opposed to this. This tells your clients that, well, my paintings are worth $100 or $200. This tells your clients, you're looking at 1000 to 2000 if you want one of mine. So you could spend a little more at the beginning. You get a lot more at the end in the sales. Not only that, the canvases are so beautifully finished. I have another one that I was working on that they sent me. Um, that's their new product. And these are them. I'll pass these around because these are fun. Um, these are done on gator board. Okay? They're not foam core, they're gator board. And they primarily started making these and I'll, you'll be able to feel the difference um, as soon as you feel these. And these are three different surfaces. So when you pass them around, make sure they go and feel the different surfaces. This is oil primed, triple primed Belgium linen canvas, the finest that you can possibly do. They're put on gator board, which is uh, acid free, and it is absolutely, I mean, you can't bend these things. They are mainly produced for artists to go out into the wilderness that are really concerned with every ounce. So these are very, very light. When you feel them, they're very, very lightweight. Um, so go ahead and pass those around quickly. Um, so I highly recommend, and there's a Wind River, what did I say, Wind River? Wind River Arts, yeah, Wind River Arts, um, and I'm sure that you can look them up on the internet, and again, I'll have that information. Um, you cannot fail if you make sure that every step of the way you have the quality supplies. If you cannot be a good planar painter unless you have a good box. You cannot produce quality work if you have a cheap uh, tripod. You cannot produce quality work if you don't have a, a surface that is quality. Everything along the way makes a difference. And the panel is the end product. You have to have a good panel at the end to have a good quality. And it changes the effect of the entire surface immediately. So Carol, you want to pass that around really quickly? They tell me that uh, you know McPherson and some of the big artists are using the gator boards. Um, I'm traditional. I love that. I mean, I was like, I looked at that. I was like, okay, I'm sold. Um, I like the mahogany boards. Um, Chris has got uh, uh, access, and we have it on our website for uh, Centurion panels, which are excellent. The Centurion panels look heavy. the Centurion panels look like this, but they're oil prime canvas and they're finished like this. They're a really good quality panel, also. 
Hmm? The Centurion boards? They're a wonderful surface. Um, they're just not as luscious as that panel. Yeah, I'm a snob. <laughs> you told us about, you know, go get the thing cut up and your size and spray it with your... Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Hello. Hello. Yeah. What is this? My integrity is always being questioned. So what does Stefan use? Well, just depends on how my classes are that week. But anyway, a lot of people will kind of have issues about, you know, supplies and things like that. And at times I'm like, you know, hey, I like painting on masonite boards, you know? And so I hate gesso. I hate gesso. Many artists hate gesso. And the gesso that you buy in the can isn't gesso, it's latex paint. You could paint your house with it. True gesso is marble dust, white pigment, and rabbit skin glue. And if you're really serious about working with gesso, you make your own, they don't sell it. You could buy the rabbit skin glue, you can buy the marble dust, and you buy the white pigment, you make it in water, you heat it up, and then you make your panels, okay? Gesso is just latex paint, and I hate it. When you, when you paint with it, you get stripes on it. So I thought, okay, I'm, gesso's modern, I got over it, it's latex paint. It's still a pain in the ass to use and impractical in my world. I like masonite panels and I can go through them, especially when I was producing a lot of them every week. So what I actually got um, an idea was, is to buy a big sheet of masonite boards. Okay, these are not the ones that have the chemicals in them. They have a rough side on one side and a smooth side on the other. And then I asked them, the, the, the hardware company, to cut them into my sizes. And I use odd sizes because I like the golden mean sizes. And so they're long and narrow and usually an off, an off size. And then what I do is I go down to the hardware store and, I, and it just dawned on me like, well, if I'm going to use a modern day gesso, why not use modern day primer? And so I went to the, the place and got Rust-Oleum primer really? that you use for cars. And it dawned on me like, well, you paint oil paints on top of cars, you know, why wouldn't, well, it would stick, right? And that product is made to stick forever, probably more than gesso would ever would. And I just take a spray can and I spray these. And the beautiful thing about using Rust-Oleum um, spray is that uh, you spray it, you spray it, you spray it, you wait three minutes out in the sun, and it's ready to paint on. Gesso requires to dry, and then you have to sand it. These, this is a board that has just been sprayed, and you can feel it. It is as slick as this floor. But you can feel how heavy it is. Yeah, no, that's if what you I sprayed think. it all the way around, <clears throat> then it wouldn't work too, right? It wouldn't work. You'd spray the back of it, too. Mm -hmm. And so, so pushing everything aside, and you really, you know, I would recommend getting a masonite board, cutting it into whatever sizes you want. It costs you as little as maybe a dollar a canvas. Go down and get the Rust-Oleum um, spray can that you get at the hardware store and spray your little heart's content. And you'll see that that will probably produce about as good a quality as you possibly imagine. And the entire thing costs you under two bucks. And you paint right on it almost immediately. That stuff is made so that you could paint on it fairly quickly. That board there has not been sanded. So you don't have to sand it. Oftentimes with gesso, you end up with all kinds of brush marks and then you have to let it dry. A lot of prep work, so yes. Mm -hmm.